Yo, what is good dev guys? It's your boy Kane. Yes, sir. I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to show you guys the process of setting up Houdini engine for Unreal Engine 5 Preview 2. Now, depending on when you're watching this, a lot of this stuff might change. But for now, this is how you get things done. So the first thing you want to do is navigate to sideeffects.com. Now, again, in the future, this the layout of this page might be different. So I'm going to show you two ways to find this. The first way is to right here where this thing says Project Titan Houdini Engine 5 Tech Demo. Go ahead and hit this Learn More. And right here on this button, you'll be able to click this and it'll navigate you to the GitHub where the Houdini Engine plugin is located. Now, the second way to do this is to come over here, maybe uh, just start, say you open up GitHub. You start the home page and all you would do is look for Houdini engine. And this first one here should be the most updated one. Uh, you got Houdini engine for Unreal and Houdini engine for Unity. Uh, so you can click on here and it'll take you to basically the same place that that link took you. I'd be real with you. I'd bookmark this if I was you uh, because it's better to get the latest version of Houdini uh, engine from the actual GitHub repo than to get it from the launcher. Uh, I mean, even though they're pretty much in sync, but this gets updated first. So uh, what you want to do here is drop down on code here, copy this URL, and hopefully you guys have the GitHub desktop client. So copy this. If you don't hit this and if you don't have it, you can download it from here. Uh, this just makes it so that you can manage your GitHub repos all in one place and not have to keep on coming here, downloading the zip every time. So I'm going to open up my desktop client for GitHub. And what you do is go to File, Clone Repo, go to URL. You right click in here and you paste that URL. So I already have it, so it's not going to let me do it. But once you do that, you'll get a repo that it'll do some cooking and you'll get a repo that looks pretty much like this. It'll it'll have like the same layout. The only thing that that I have different right now is I have the current branch set to Unreal Engine 5.0. So if you drop down here, by default, it's going to be set to 427, depending on when you're watching this video. If 5 is already out in production, then this should be the default branch. Uh, but Right now it's 427. So you you would just scroll down to the bottom and I already have it activated. So that's why it's at the top, but it'll be underneath 426 and you just go ahead and click on it and it'll change the branch to that version. And then whenever you navigate to the actual, uh, ex the file in the Explorer, it'll be the updated version. So I'm gonna exit out of this. Now I should say that in order for this to work right now, uh, in the alpha stage of this plugin, you need to be using a C++ project. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this from a blueprint project, convert your blueprint project to C++, and then get the Houdini engine plugin working. So let's go to Unreal Engine Preview. Thank God they turned off the Steam VR shit by default. That was the most annoying thing to have my Steam VR pop up every time I open up Unreal. So I'm gonna go to games. Let's just open up a third person and blueprint. Make sure it's blueprint. Uh, I mean, if, if you wanna skip a step, make it C++, you dig what I'm saying? But some, a lot of people that might be using Houdini Engine might be using blueprint projects. So I'll show you guys how to get that done. So let's call this Houdini Engine. Toot. Create that project. And God, those are so fast. That is the benefit of Blueprint right there. Okay, so say you already have a Blueprint project and you want to, you know, test out some Houdini Engine assets that you might have found somewhere on the marketplace or somebody had like a repo of them somewhere. So what you would do is go up to Tools and hit New C++ Class and just make an empty C++ Class. If you're not going to use C++, at all, you don't have to think about any of this. Just name it my class and put it in the public folder and hit create class, right? You're not going to use C++. You don't need to think about how to keep this organized or anything like that. 
So I'm gonna hit no on this and then I'm going to close this down. And now we're going to navigate to the directory where that project is. Unreal projects. And what was that? It was called Houdini Engine 2. And now in this directory, you want to right click or add a new folder. I'm sorry. Add a new folder, call it plugins. Get into this folder. Let's make another folder in here called runtime. And now we want to navigate to the, the repo where we actually save the Houdini engine uh, repository. And I got mine saved in this folder, Houdini engine for Unreal. I'm going to copy that and paste it inside of this runtime folder that I just created. So now we've officially put our plugin inside of our project. And as I stated before, um, you need to be using a C++ project to do this. And the reason I'm putting it in the project is because say you put it in the engine. If your project is blueprint, you won't be able to open it because this plugin won't be able to compile without being compiled from source. So you need to put it in either a C++ projects directory or whenever you start a project, if you put it in the engine folder, it needs to be C++. But I'm taking this as you guys are using Blueprint and you want to use Houdini Engine. So that's the way to go about it. So with that done, let's right click on this and generate Visual Studio project files. And this, this is just so we can update this solution file to include our new plugins folder. I'm going to right click, edit this with Rider. If you got Visual Studio, you just double click it and it'll open it up in Visual Studio. Uh, I I should talk to Ryder about getting a fucking, I don't know, like a affiliate link or something. Like if somebody gets Ryder through my affiliate link, maybe I get like a dollar or something. Because I talk about they ass a lot. You know what I'm saying? But it's so good. I'm free marketing for them, basically. Okay, so this is going to do a little bit of thinking. But you can see here we got our plugins folder here. Everything's all fine and dandy. I'm also going to, if you're using Rider, you also want to install the plugin into the game folder. They used to give you two options to plug it into the engine or the game, but for 5.0 right now, it's broken to install it into the engine, so they just got rid of that option. Okay, so Rider was installed properly. We're just going to close that and let's just run the project. Uh, of course, uh, Unreal is going to be processing some source files and stuff like that, or Rider is going to be processing the source files. So things might move a little slow, but don't think, you know, it's the end of the world. Uh, it only has to do this like one time, and then you never really have to do this again unless you change something in the source files. But I'm going to let this compile, and I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, so that finished compiling. It took a little bit more time than I expected. Uh, I'm going to update this here. And if you were paying attention here, it said that we had a new plugin. And you can also see here that we have Houdini Engine inside of our taskbar here up, up top. But if we go to Edit Plugins, you can also see here in the project, well, installed, I'm sorry, you'll see that Houdini Engine version 2 has been installed. So we're good to go on that front. Now let's try to import, and this is what I'm going through this as if I'm just like a person using Houdini Engine for the first time. So let me just say HDAs or something like that for my folder. And let's import an HDA that I might have gotten from somewhere. Like there's a whole gang of HDAs uh, uh, accessible to you guys on the side effects website. Just know where to look. Um, I'll leave a link to that in, in the description to get all these game jam assets here. Let's bring in this game jam rock, right? I'll save this. I'll try to drag this into my level. And you see here that nothing is working. It's saying my Houdini engine session not started. If I try to go to Houdini engine and create a session, it'll say failed to start the engine session. It's like, what? I thought I didn't need anything. I didn't uh, like all I needed was Houdini engine and the HDA. This is a little bit wrong, right? So you need to have Houdini installed at least the apprentice version so that you can do this next step. So let's go here to Houdini engine, go to plugin settings, 
And first, let's turn to change this to TCP or TCP socket and just allows us to set up our own server port and stuff like that. But we also want to go down here to where it says Houdini location. Now, use custom location. You want to tick this on. And you want to navigate to where you have Houdini installed, whether it's the apprentice version, the FX version, the any version, the core version. You want to navigate to that directory. And for me, it's the side effects, actually a side effects. And you want to give it this bin folder right here. Once you select that folder, everything is good to go. Only thing you need to do is restart this editor. So I'm just going to do that from the C++ from the I'm sorry, from the, the actual IDE. And we're still not getting let's restart session here. Are we about to crash? Okay, so now we have a valid Houdini session. So, so if it doesn't automatically start up a Houdini session when you restart the, uh, the editor, then just hit restart session because technically it should have started a session when you open up the project. So now let's try to drag this puppy in. And now you see Houdini's doing a little thought process and now it just cooked us a rock here. And now I could go ahead and I can work with this rock in different ways. You can give it a uh, custom input. Uh, you can give it uh, input from the world outliner. So let me do some, let me do some things like maybe we can turn this thing into rock right here. We can turn this into rocks or maybe we can turn this into rocks. Let's see. So let's do world outliner and it, let me, get here. Let's start selection right here. So let's select this one and 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 this one. And once you finish your selection, go back and hit use current selection. Now this is going to bake a rock asset in the place of that original asset. Now, since this is using like, I think this is BSP, it's given a little bit of error. So what we can do to make this even cooler is we can go to place actors and let's get a cube here, place this cube. And let's, um, let's scale this cube like this and maybe rotate it Alt. Let's alt drag another one, rotate it. And let's maybe scale this a little bit, maybe too big. And then let's drag this one again and rotate it. Oops. And rotate it the other way like this. And now let's do the same thing here to our Houdini digital asset. So we click on the HDA. Then we say start selection. Let's select this one, this one, and this one. And then let's say use that current selection. And now you see we got this, this rock bridge procedurally generated along this geometry, which is pretty cool. So yeah, uh, keep, keep on playing around with that stuff, man. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to me through discord or my comment section. A lot of people send me messages on discord. Please don't do that. Okay. Because you got to think about it like this. You might have a question that someone else might have. So if you have a question, send it to me in the discord channel and just tag me in it. You don't have to send me a direct message. If I ever need to help someone, I'd rather do it in a public sense so that if someone else has that same question, they will have an answer accessible to them. I don't have to answer the same question 10 times. You get what I'm saying? I also have public chat channels inside of my discord as well. So if you ever want to chat, ping me, man, if I, if I'm free, I'll jump in the chat with you. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Uh, I appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.